Hi, I'm Steve, and welcome back to our How To API series. And today we're going to look at how to add analytics into your API. I'm going to take an example we used in episode one, which was a simple sentiment API. I'm going to add sentiment features to that and also some analytics. And really, it's going to be a very simple example. Uh, all of the source code for the example is going to be available uh, at GitHub. So if you go to github.com slash three scale, you'll find the sentiment API itself, version one and two. And you'll also find the Ruby gem, which we're using from Threescale to do the authentication and the reporting for the analytics. You can also check out support.threescale.net and there's a lot of resources there for really seeing how all these things work together. And you'll also find the various videos. So in version one of the API, we really had um, some static content that was being returned by an API. And the idea was you could take a word and get a sentiment score for it. So if you took hello.json and you called that, you would get a piece of JSON back to tell you something. We added authentication and we had that up and running on Heroku uh, directly. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at our, our API as it is. So we can see it running in here. We can see we get unauthorized when we call, and that's because we added authentication. So um, we, we've got the, the API running there, and we also have our three-scale dashboard. So if we click on there, these are the... The, the two sample apps which are authenticated, and we're going to um, basically take one of those and uh, use the credentials to start calling the API. So I'm going to add those credentials in, and when I do, I can actually see that I'm calling the API and I'm allowed to access it. But I can see that I'm getting this string unknown, and that's just because we're returning static content. That's what we managed to do the, the last time around. So the first thing I want to do is change that. So I'm going to click on my code, and uh, there's a few updates. So this is version two. I've changed the version number. And I've also changed the version number, and that'll be in the path. So when we're calling, we're going to call version 2 of the API. And probably the biggest change here is you'll see that we're, we've got this analyzer object um, that's being pulled in. And that's actually going to do the heavy lifting of creating the sentiment analysis of our words. And if I go to the analyzer, that's then in the download as well. You can find it on GitHub. It's a simple piece of code which is calling a, a lookup table of different words with values in it. If I go back to my code, um, this is the piece of code that's actually returning the static value at the moment. So I want to get rid of that. That's the unknown in there. So I think I'm going to change it. I'm just going to delete that and basically replace it with something else. And I'm going to take my object. Um, I'm going to call the word method on that. And I'm going to pull in the parameter that's being, that's being passed in by the API. So that's basically my word parameter right there. And I turn that into JSON. And that's what I'm going to return and just get rid of what I had before. And you'll be able to see that I actually did this already for the other methods in the API uh, just here. And um, now we can basically uh, uh, hopefully get a better result than we did before. So I'm going to stop my app and uh, start it again. So this is all running on local host. And now I'm going to call the same API I was calling before and see what happens. Ah, yep, there we go. So right now I'm getting a value back for each of those. Hello is kind of neutral. So I'm going to try a different word. I'm going to try terrible. Yep. OK, so we get a minus 3. So minus 3, um, obviously, is negative sentiment. Let's try fantastic. Yep, that's better. So we get 4. So you can see now that the, the, uh, the analyzer object being called, it's giving us some meaningful results. But I'm still not um, super happy because now, although I'm getting, I have an API running and I can call it with various apps and they're authenticated, um, and I keep, I'm obviously passing in these app IDs to tell the system who I am, I'm not recording what's going on. So what I'd like to do is actually measure who's calling which methods. And that's my analytics element. So I'm going to dive into that. So here, version 2.1 in the download, you can take a look at it. There are a few changes. I've still got my three scale component, which I was using to do authentication uh, in there. And you can see that I'm using my provider key to access the, the system. And I've added a, another report method. So this is another helper method um, uh, within, within Grape, which is basically going to record some traffic whenever anything happens. And um, this particular method, the helper method, is going to get called whenever any one of the, the methods on the API is called. So you can see there's a report line which has been added in line. So we're going we're gonna to do some reporting back to Threescale whenever any of, the, uh, any of the methods in the API is being called. And that should basically tell us, tell us more about what's going on. So now I'm going to just change my uh, config.ru and call the right version of the API. So I just update that. That tells uh, the system what we should be actually talking to when we call the API. So we're going to do a restart. And I'm also going to change the API that I'm going to call. So I'm going to go back to version 2.1.
There we go. So now when I call that, the same thing happens. So I'm still accessing the API as I was before, but something should be happening in the background and I can call like various different different um, words and it'll do the same thing. And um, now these blocks are being executed. So I'm actually executing the authenticate and the report at the same time. Let's go and have a look and see what happens. So I can go into the monitoring area of my dashboard and see what happens. And uh, if I click on usage, actually I'll see, wow, here we go. We've actually got some traffic on the API and that's happened already. So we've got seven transactions which have occurred and I can see what's going on, which is, which is great. But I'd really like probably a little bit more than this because this is just telling me that the API has been called, but I'd really like to know which methods are being called. So to do that, I'm just going to extend the method that I'm uh, using to do the reporting and add some parameters to that. And that'll basically allow me to, to be smarter as to what I'm actually telling the API when I'm calling Fuscale. So those parameters are called in the API like that. And so I'm going to look at each of the different methods that I have. I'm going to call the method in the right way. So I'm going to add the name of this method. Let's come up with a name. So it's going to be word slash get. And it's going to be one value of one when that's called. And this is the post method. So it's going to be word slash post, I guess. And I'm going to make it the one. And I'll do the same for the sentences uh, uh, part of the API. So sentences and that's get called. It's also one. And I could obviously leave those ones off because they're optional parameters. And uh, if I'm doing complicated things, I might want to report different metrics. So again, I'm going to restart. So restarting the API. And now I'm going to make some calls and see what happens. I made those calls. And we go and refresh the, the display. And we're still on seven, which is kind of strange. So that's, that's uh, a strange thing because we've made some more calls. But actually, the reason is I haven't declared those methods that, I, uh, that I've that i been tracking. So I actually need to go into my control panel and add those methods to my API. So I've gone, I'm going here to the API section. And when I see it, I can see uh, a bunch of metrics which are declared here. And on that hits metric, I'm going to declare my, my methods. So here we go. I'm going to call this one the word get method. And I'm going to use this exact same string that I was using within the code. And that's important because the Threescale system will, will take those and make that match up uh, with what we were doing before. So that's created that method. And now um, I can see that it's live. And I'm just going to go ahead and create the other methods as well. There we go. Word post. And then I've got post. And just the last one I'm going to add is the sentences method. Give it a proper name as well. And so the display name is seen within the portal later on. And um, that's not something we'll cover in this video, but you'll see it. So if we um, if we actually go to any of the other plans on the API, you'll actually see that all of those methods are present as well. So they're shared across the whole API now, now that I've created them once. So I'm not going to try again. I'm going to start calling the API again. Just call it a couple of times, see what happens. Use a different word. Get the API. Now if I go back to the dashboard, it's going to check if they've been recorded. So now if I go to monitoring, I can see that usage. So here we are. We have usage, and there's nine transactions. And I can also see the different methods that were called. So that basically gives me much more detailed data about what's going on. And I can create as many methods as I like and obviously change things. The other thing I can do is I can drill down into one of the applications and see uh, the traffic on an application by application basis. So if I look at this and I look at the stats area of the, of the application, I can see the same data I saw before. And that's obviously just specific to that application. And if there were many applications sending traffic, the aggregate view would be different from the, from the application view. So that's all. We've managed to wire up our API to do some reporting and actually track what's going on. Um, and basically, um, you could add a lot more different things to that. And you could do a lot more structure in terms of what you're tracking on the API. Um, you can also report on other metrics. You may be reporting things like CPU hours or the number of results returned or a whole bunch of other things about the API. You could also, as you saw, I had the reporting just set up there in band. That means there was a call to the Threescale API before a return. You could use something like the delayed job or rescue in Ruby to, to do that reporting once you've actually responded back to the customer. And the other thing you can do is you can use the Threescale portal to send that and show that data back to your developers. 
So here are some links. Um, if you go to threescale.net, um, you will be able to sign up for an account and get all that resource set up. On GitHub, you'll find all the example code. And if you want to do a delayed job kind of setup, you can also do that. Uh, looking at some upcoming episodes, so this example, we're going to take it further and do more things. So next, we'll show you how to do stricter control of your API, how to create different classes of apps, how to configure developer portals, and also get into operations. So thanks very much for your time, and um, we'll see you in the next episode.